for our own success and our own salvation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and commands us what is in our well-being and best interest. We translate it as, O believers, be mindful of Allah, worship Allah as He deserves, as is His right upon you. And do not die except in a state of worship. We know we could leave this world at any moment. And if our sincere desire is to leave in a manner that is pleasing to Allah, then surely we must be sincere in living upon it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live upon Islam and to die upon Iman. Allahumma ameen. Yesterday, a family of 12 was killed with one bomb that dropped on their home in Gaza. A small girl, perhaps some people saw her video, a 10-year-old shaking and in shock in the hospital. Her parents, her siblings, all dead in one bomb. You saw the example of some young, young children that they found, or the baby that they found, 18 months. The entire family died, sole survivors. You have the example of the young boy whose face was burned off because there is chemical warfare. And he's consoling his father in the hospital who's on the bed next to him crying. The boy is comforting the father and the boy is the one who is bleeding, the one who is going through this pain of the burns. You have the example of an entire family that was told, leave your home because it's going to be bombed. They left their home and they still got bombed and killed along the way. Where is this happening? You know where this is happening. This is happening in the land that Allah mentioned in the Quran. This is happening in the land that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an liberated. And when Umar radiallahu an entered Jerusalem, when he entered Al-Aqsa, we know the story. When he liberated with a peaceful surrender, for the first time in several centuries, he gave minorities the right to worship. Specifically, he allowed the Jews back in because the Christians had kicked them out. Umar radiallahu an spoke some words that were very important on that day. And there was a covenant, a ahid, the assurance of Umar that included the religious minorities amongst them, the Christians and the Jews, and of course, the Muslims who now were in control, who were going to give justice to those who are able to worship as they wanted to worship. The assurances that he gave were assurances that spread throughout the Byzantine Christian Empire. They saw this as an inspiration, a place in which there is diversity, a, a place in which all people can worship freely, a place of justice. Today, it is no longer a place of justice. Today, it is a place of occupation, a place in which there is terrorism, a place in which there's brutality, a place in which children are killed and it is justified. They justify it how? By saying this is a reaction. This is a response. 500 children in the last few days. What kind of moral army justifies this? What kind of people around the world would justify something like this? At least we as Muslims, if we see a Muslim doing something wrong, we will say this is not allowed in Islam. We condemn the killing of children. We condemn the killing of innocent people. We do not shy away. We're not afraid to say that. But while this is happening around the world today, ethnic cleansing and genocide in some of the most evil matters in the history of the land and the history of humanity, we find that there is support for this. But of course, for many Muslims, there are a lot of questions that come to mind. Amongst them, the question is, why is Al-Aqsa so important to us? As Muslims, every land and every place is important in, in which there is injustice. We care. If it is an atheist, a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Jew, a Muslim being oppressed here in Dearborn or anywhere around the world, and we are able to help, we will help. Why? We are required by Allah. We are commanded to stand with justice. In this case, there is another level to it. We have seen the overwhelming support despite the propaganda. The overwhelming support from many people around the world who are finally talking about the occupation itself, the oppression of 75 years, that is a source cause of many other injustices that we see, the bloodshed that we see, the incidents that we see. This is a place that does not belong to those who are kicking out Palestinians left and right, regardless of their religion, Muslims, Christians, and others. This is a land that is blessed for us first and foremost. This is a religious matter because of justice and because it is a blessed land. Mentioned in the Quran on numerous occasions, it is the first Qibla of Islam. The Muslims pray towards Al-Aqsa for over a year, as you know, and then after moving to Medina for over a year, meaning after they moved to Medina, the revelation came down to turn towards the Kaaba, towards Masjid Al-Haram. This is the land in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent to lead the prophets in prayer during Al-Isra' wal-Mi'raj and then ascended. 
This is a blessed land mentioned throughout the Quran. Many prophets and messengers were either born there or were people who had gone through that place and given uh, and c conveyed the message of Allah. In addition to all of this is a central question. What can I do? Many people are, are feeling helpless. You're seeing people brutally killed. You're seeing the videos and children. It's not easy to watch. It's so tragic. It's so heavy. When you see this, the natural response is, I do feel like this is wrong and I do feel like I want to help. So if you have that feeling, if that is the thought, if that is the question, first and foremost, this is a good sign that your heart is still there. For wallahi, we have seen and heard directly from some people who are seeing Palestinians killed, who are seeing the children being killed. And they said, I don't care. This is what they deserve. Who says something like this? Unless there's no heart left inside of them. Who says something like that? Unless there's no mercy or compassion or justice. So the first sign, the first sign that there's some heart is that you do care. In addition to this, we recognize as Muslims, we are one body. We are one ummah. And I say this very explicitly for those who are very nationalistic. We do not care about geographic borders. We do not care if you are from Yemen or Syria or Palestine or Jordan or America. We are one ummah. La ilaha illallah is what unites us. Yes, at times people utilize the flags to symbolize sovereignty, freedom, justice that they want. But what unites us at the end of the day is our mission for justice, is the fact that we are all Muslims. So when part of the body is hurting and the other part of the body is restless, this is a sign that you are a believer. This is a sign that you feel the pain of your brothers and your sisters. But I want to give some advices and reminders. Number one, sometimes you learn from the seerah that there is nothing directly physical that you can do when someone is suffering. I know this is not what we want to hear, but this is the reality. You are not over there, you are over here. Sometimes physical, direct help in the moment to shield that child from the bomb, to help somebody carry their stuff as they're being kicked out of their home. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. How do we know this? The Prophet ﷺ in Mecca, as Sumayya and Yasir are being tortured, the first martyrs in Islam, as they are being tortured and they are minorities and you cannot fight back and there's no power. What do they do? What does he say Yasir, Be patient, O family of Yasir. For paradise is your promise. It is your destination. Sometimes you have to remind people to persevere, to be patient, to be strong, to be optimistic, because maybe there is nothing in that moment that you physically are capable of doing. In addition, you look at the first 10 years in the Meccan era when they were being persecuted, tortured, killed as well. What happened? They come to the Prophet ﷺ one day. The situation was so bad. And long story short, I'm summarizing the hadith here. They complained to the Prophet وسلم, and they said to him, قلنا له, ألا تستنصر لنا, ألا تدعو الله لنا? They said, will you not help us or give us something to, to be helped with? Will you not make dua for Allah to give us victory and end this suffering, meaning right now? Can we just stop the suffering right now? Can you do something about it? The Prophet وسلم, reminded them because they were in need of this reminder about a person who came from before them, a believer who was taken and cut in half with a saw. And a person who did not leave his religion because of that. A person who was tortured with metal, scraping his body, I apologize for being explicit. And he did not leave his religion because of that. And then he said to them, at the end of this, there's a very powerful reminder. He said, Wallahi la yutimanna hadha al -am. This matter of Islam, we're being persecuted. We're, we're holding on to the truth. But this matter will spread. Hatta yasir al rakibu until the rider is able to go min sana'a ila hadramaut from sana'a to hadramaut la yakhafu illa Allah fearing no one but Allah meaning what? he will have that freedom that Islam will spread the truth will spread aw idhib ala ghanamihi or the wolf with the sheep walakinnakum tasta'jilun you are hasty in what way? usually you think if someone's telling you I'm suffering when is the victory of Allah coming? usually you might not think to say like hey stop being hasty وَلَكِنَّكُمْ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ means وَلَكِنَّكُمْ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ الْمُحَقَّةِ You are rushing the victory of Allah that is guaranteed, that is coming soon. أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ The victory and the support, the help of Allah is nearby. But there are many manifestations of support. And so with this first reminder, with this first reminder, we take the lesson that at times there is nothing physical that you are able to do. But you are supposed to recognize there are circumstances. There's a capacity. What can you do in your capacity? The second, we learn from the stories of the messengers and the prophets in almost one-fourth of the Qur'an. 
we learn that many times prophets and messengers went through hardship. Could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have ended the hardship instantaneously? Yes. Instantly, yes. And in some cases, we saw that. But many of them had to fight battles. Many of them had to be uh, tortured. Many of them, their followers were killed. Many of them had to struggle. Many of them had to strive for 950 years. And they saw their own families being abused at times and their own followers being executed. The prophets and the messengers. So we learn a lesson here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not change instantaneously. Every single experience, every single hardship that took place, there are wisdoms for that. So you read Surah Al-Buruj. And the main story in Surah Al-Buruj, we teach our children, it's very clear. A group of believers, they saw the, the miracle, the sign that this young boy is a believer and he believes in Allah, he's calling people to worship Allah. So they all became Muslims. They were threatened. There was a ditch, Ashab al-Ukhdud, the ditch that was dug. A fire was kindled. And the king said, leave your religion or you will die. You have two choices. Renounce your faith in God or you will die. What did they do? They held on to their faith. They died. That's the end of the story. Sometimes we look for a material happy ending as though that means you were successful and the death meant that you were not. But this is not the reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to them in the Quran. These are shuhada. And the king, do we know what happened to the king? No, we do not. Does Allah tell us later on the king was punished in a dunya or something happened to him right after this? We don't have any reference to that whatsoever in the sunnah. What does that mean? That means that this life is not the end all be all. That means there is a wisdom for what happens in this world. That some people for them, shahada, is what they will have in the highest ranks of Jannah. But do not assume that just because they did not survive, they did not win a battle, they did not survive in the moment, that they were not successful. Don't ever assume that. Or that Allah is not aware of what the oppressors do. When Allah tells us very clearly, Do not assume that Allah is unaware of what the oppressors do. He delays them. He delays meaning their punishment. For a day in which the eyes will be staring in horror. Their eyes will be staring in horror because of the punishment that is coming to them. Do not assume that Allah is unaware. And the third point here is, what can you do personally? Aside from advocacy, which we'll address, aside from striving, which we'll address, what can you do? Between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember this. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O believers. 89 times in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, pay closer attention. In tansu Allah yansurkum. If you give victory, support to the religion of Allah, Allah will give you victory. What does that mean? In tansur Allah starts with you. In tansur Allah means you practice Islam. In tansur Allah does not mean that when something happens you complain, but you yourself are not a source of barakah and tawfiq for the ummah. That you yourself are committing so many sins that perhaps some of your sins are harming the ummah. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس. Corruption spreads in the world and the land and the sea because of what people have done ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا. People will taste a fraction of their evil, a fraction of the consequence. Why? There's a reminder when there's a hardship in this world for you or others. There is a very clear reminder. لعلهم يرجعون. Go back to Allah. لعلهم يرجعون. Go back to Allah. And our brothers and sisters in Gaza are an amazing example because the masajid are being bombed and demolished and they are praying Fajr on the rubble. They are still praying Fajr on time. We are living in a land in which we have this freedom and many Muslims are not even practicing their Islam. Many Muslims are shy to be Muslim. Many Muslims are embarrassed to wear hijab. Many Muslims are embarrassed to use their real names. Where is the Islam and the victory and the support that we are talking about? It starts with us. And this does not mean just ibadat that people see. This includes your character. In Allah means you treat your family with good character. In Allah means behind closed doors when you are at home, that you honor your parents, you honor your wife, you honor your husband, you honor your children, that you are a person who is reflecting the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Allah means every time you say Allahu Akbar with every salah and after every prayer in the adhan and the iqama and throughout the day, that you are living upon it, that Allah is greater than my desires, my enemies, my weaknesses, my fears, my anxiety. Allah is greater and deserving of our worship. Allah is greater and He is perfect. So we turn to Him in Tansurullah Yansurkum as a reminder for us that one of many ways to help the Ummah is for you to turn back to Allah. 
This requires us to have some striving. One brother yesterday, we were talking about this. He said, I feel so embarrassed that I'm looking at what's happening in many countries around the world and they literally don't have food. They are being bombed. They are being attacked in different countries. And he said, and I'm finding myself struggling to just pray Fajr. I'm finding myself struggling to just pray the five prayers on time. He's like, and I'm talking about how the Muslims need to be strong and defend their homes and be physically strong as well. And he's like, I can't even get up for Fajr. In Tansurullah Yansurkum, there's a reminder for us to be grateful for our loved ones, be grateful for your family members, be grateful for your health, be grateful for your freedom and your ability to worship and living in a country in which you have the freedom of speech to speak on behalf of those who are being silenced. And wallahi, even in this country, if you speak on behalf of those who are being silenced, certain groups you are not allowed to defend. If you defend them, you will find the backlash. You will find people talking about you. You will find the propaganda machine. You will find yourself being quote unquote canceled, losing potentially a job or losing yourself on campus. You will find this is the reality today. This requires us to be even more resilient. This requires us to be stronger, but also to be wise, to be strategic. When we talk about what's happening in Palestine, don't ever remove the reference of Shahada. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that this life is not the end of all, this life is a test. He'll test you, meaning people will be tested in different ways. Some of you will face in this life fear and the loss of loved ones, the loss of food, the loss of agriculture. In every single Quranic context, remember this tafsir lesson. In every single passage of the Quran where hardship is mentioned, Allah mentions something for you to hold on to. Something comforting, something of resilience, something to keep doing. So you have istainu bis sabri wa salah, turn to prayer and perseverance. You have dua mentioned in the Quran, you have afterlife mentioned in the Quran that there's a reward as well. So all of these reminders cause us when we share news with our loved ones, with community, when you spread news on social media about what's happening, share one reminder as well. Make dua. Share one reminder, educate, raise awareness, share this video. So you have something of optimism, of action, of resilience included with it. Our brothers and sisters who died as shuhada, we don't worry about them, where they are now. We don't worry about where they ended up. They are in a much better place than we are. But it's those who survive who are facing injustice. Because those who die and they hold on to their Islam, the malaika come to them and they say, What? Allah takhafu wala tahzanu. But as for those who survive, we remind them and Allah reminds us, Wala tahinu wala tahzanu. Do not be sad. Do not be sad. Do not be sad. The sadness in the Quran is always emphasizes something that you do not want to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on our brothers and our sisters and grant justice and relief. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a source of justice. Ask Allah for forgiveness. He is the oft forgiving, the ever merciful. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. We live in a land in which we have the ability to help those who are suffering and those who are silenced all around the world. And yet some people are afraid. So they will remain silent. But the reality is if you have a platform, if you have the ability to say something, whether in a small group, whether as a response to someone else, whether online, if you use social media and you do not, it's as though you're watching an injustice and you don't care about addressing it, about the honor of our brothers and sisters who are defending Masjid al-Aqsa. Those Palestinians who have had resilience for 75 years. Many Muslims here and all around the world would not be living where we are living if there was no invasion and occupation. We would probably still be in Palestine. This is the reality. Many Muslims perhaps here as well would have had access a long time ago to go and pray in Masjid al-Aqsa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us that. Do not be ashamed to speak up and defend the truth. It is more shameful to remain silent. It is more shameful to feel afraid. There are parents in Gaza who are telling us right now, the children and the parents are sleeping in one room. Because if the building falls and everyone dies, they don't want a sole survivor from the children. They're afraid. And there are other parents telling us the opposite. That some of them are putting their children in different rooms or even with relatives. Because if our building drops and we are bombed and killed, we hope somebody in the family will survive. There are mothers and wives and daughters and sisters who are sleeping with their hijab, sleeping with their clothes. Why? They're thinking most likely we will die tonight. And if we die, we don't want to be exposed as the rubble is being removed. 
The children there are telling us we are praying six prayers a day. There's no way not to pray janazah in a place like this. The oppression is real, the occupation is real, the violence is real. We cannot feel ashamed because of the propaganda machines. We cannot be afraid because there's so much emphasis on condemning this or condemning that. We condemn violence starting with 75 years of violence, starting with what's happening right now, starting with the killing of children. And of course, the reality is there are many people who will not make it past this week. There are many brothers and sisters in Gaza who will not make it past this week. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for those who survive, to grant them sabr, to grant them the, the willingness, the ability to continue. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept those who die as shuhada and to make us a means of justice. You are not required to see the result of liberating Palestine or any other land from injustice. You are required to focus on the effort. You are required to do your part. Don't say it's too big of a problem. There's too much we're doing. There's too much of an opposition. The problem here is that we already are putting ourselves in a place of defeat. Allah will judge you based on your actions, your commitments, not necessarily the results. And the most beloved of people to Allah are those who are most beneficial to others. We have, of course, a reminder that we need to keep our trust in Allah. That sometimes even Muslims here are asking questions like, what's going on? Why is this happening? You need to put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the previous nations who were shaken, like the companions who were shaken, like the prophets and the messengers who were shaken. This is part of the wisdoms of this world, the test of this life, but it doesn't end here. There is a promise of Jannah. There is a promise of success. There is a promise of reward. There's a promise of justice as well. So whatever you can do strategically, wisely to raise awareness, whatever you can do to support the many causes, the many organizations that are addressing this matter, whatever you can do to go to and attend events in which people are collectively with every single voice making a difference. Yes, sometimes some events are more impactful than others. The point is not to criticize and tear down the, uh, the progress that many people are putting forth. The point is that for the first time in American history, politicians are telling us firsthand, we have never seen this much support at the federal and political levels. Yes, it seems overwhelming in the opposite direction, but if you remember just 10, 20, 30 years ago, it was not like this. For the first time, people are finally saying there is an occupation, there is an invasion, there is brutality. So what can we do? Every voice makes a difference. Every single person who's part of addressing an injustice will help in some way. And what's on us is to be sincere. What's on us is to commit. What's on us at the very least is to make dua morning and night and not to stop making dua. For every dua makes a difference. And of course, there are many organizations that are on the ground in Gaza and others that are outside of Gaza waiting for the, the borders to open so they can support. There's an organization here, so support as much as you can. There is going to be, inshallah ta'ala, a fundraiser as well. Give as much as you can. This is unfolding before our eyes right now. Do not hold back from your brothers and your sisters. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them justice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for all of our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a means of justice and guidance in the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a means of protection here and all around the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the land of Palestine to be a land that has no oppression, no occupation, a land in which there is justice and peace for all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala utilize us wherever we are. 